The weather I've seen over the past two years is really something way beyond my experience and it's pretty much unprecedented. We have 11 meteorologists, different backgrounds, some of them veterans that have been doing this for 30 years. I've been doing it for 32 years and nobody can recall a March like this. This is the strangest season many folks can remember. It has confused plants and animals and a good many humans across a good portion of this country. Obviously the question arises, what's going on? Is this a symptom of climate change? It's one thing to break a record by five or ten degrees. That's a pretty big deal statistically. Records that have lasted more than a hundred years are not only being broken, they're being absolutely smashed. But to break records by 20, 25, 30 degrees? Anything in pink on that map would indicate temperatures that are more than 20 degrees above normal. In fact, I would fully expect that portions of that area will likely see temperatures of more than 30 degrees above normal. I mean, what are we up to? Close to 8,000 warm weather records since March the 10th. I don't think that's ever happened in March. Last summer, Texas and Oklahoma, hottest summer on record, even hotter than the Dust Bowl. The exceptional heat wave in Russia and other countries the previous summer. It just is a case where it's highly likely that the warmer climate is having an influence, that it's setting the atmospheric table. I just think we're sort of in uncharted waters. And, and I tell people the truth. We're running an experiment on the atmosphere. You can think of it as uh, injecting steroids into the climate, you know, a batter is going to be more likely to hit a home run, the home run being severe weather. Or you can think of, of global warming as raising the floor of the basketball courts, there'll be more dunks, and the dunks are severe weather. Any one of these events we've seen in the past few years wouldn't be that unusual to see, but the sheer number and intensity of some of these events, some of them one in 1,000 year events, they really get me wondering, okay, something is definitely up. And that something has got to be climate change. The problem is a lot of television meteorologists can't or won't take the time to drill down and really try to understand climate science and, and what a warmer, wetter atmosphere means. You know, but we're seeing some things that have been predicted now for 20 or 25 years, so I guess on some level we shouldn't be surprised. Because we've put extra heat and moisture in the atmosphere now, and that extra heat and moisture means there's more energy available, more energy for stronger storms, more energy for hotter heat waves, more intense droughts, heavier rainfall events, and that's exactly what we've been seeing the last couple of years. Some of the biggest manifestations of global climate change comes about through extremes in the hydrological cycle, the droughts and the floods. And the reasons are because the extra heating that is available has to go somewhere. Uh, some of it goes into raising temperature. That increases the water holding capacity of the atmosphere. And we end up with more moisture in the atmosphere and more evaporation. And then once that moisture is in the atmosphere, it has to go somewhere so that when we have a, a weather system developing, a cloud, a thunderstorm, a big extra tropical snowstorm maybe, there's more moisture for it to grab onto and then it rains harder or it snows harder. We get uh, more extremes of uh, flooding as a consequence of that. And at the same time, in the places where it's not raining, things are drying out. And so we end up with droughts that are more extensive or longer lived. 2011 was the most deadly and destructive tornado season in history. Move! Get out of the road! Get on the ground! Get hit by debris! Drop it down! From EF5 tornadoes to Category 5 hurricanes to hail storms up to the size of softballs, Bosch Icon wiper blades kept our windshield clean longer than any other premium blade. Oh my god! This thing is out of control! Bosch Icon wiper blades. How storm chasers clear the way. The past two tornado seasons have really been highly unusual. Taylor, go the f back! I'm not kidding. Back in 2011, we saw the, the three of the five largest tornado outbreaks by number of tornadoes ever recorded. It's going back to, well, 1950, although good records only go back to the early 1990s. So that's pretty dramatic to have three of the top five events all in one year. 
And this year already, we've had a, a top 10 event. This uh, March 2nd through 3rd tornado outbreak that killed 40 people, the number of tornadoes is going to probably be around 120. And that's a really huge tornado outbreak, uh, about the 10th biggest on record. And what's really unusual is that occurred in early March. Two years ago, 2010 was the wettest year in Minnesota history. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we had 145 tornadoes, most of the nation. The atmosphere was just supercharged with moisture and storm chasers were coming to Minnesota, which was a little disconcerting. If you heat the surface, you make the atmosphere more unstable. Hotter ground, hotter air near the ground helps make updrafts rise faster so that when these thunderstorms start building their updrafts, these updrafts accelerate higher and get more intense and you can have a stronger thunderstorm to make a stronger tornado. But on the flip side of that, the other key ingredient you need to make a tornado is something to get the air spinning. And the way you do that is if you have a very strong jet stream aloft. If you've got very powerful winds aloft that happen to change their speed and their direction with height, then you can put a shearing motion on the atmosphere. So if the air is blowing strong here, not so strong here, that's a shearing force and it gets the atmosphere spinning. So if, once you get that air spinning, you can make a tornado out of it. So we definitely know we're increasing heat and moisture, which you would think would cause more tornadoes. On the other hand, tornadoes need twist in the atmosphere, which scientists call shear. There's some data that suggests shear might actually decrease with a warmer world. So it's kind of like having a recipe with two ingredients. One you're going to add more of, one you might add less of, so it's kind of a battle between those. Unfortunately, the science is not quite settled on that. Are we seeing more tornadoes and severe storms? We are seeing them, but one has to be very careful about that statement. And the reason is because there's more people in more places. And so if you look at the tornado record, it does go up. Uh, quite a lot. You know, last year was a, a major peak and it was, it was quite deadly with the big uh, Joplin uh, tornado. But uh, a lot of the increase in tornadoes is simply because there's more people in more places. So sorting out how much of that actual record is due to changes in climate or even the variability in climate from one year to the next, uh, that's very difficult to do with the observational record. The numbers of the most violent tornadoes show a flat or even slightly negative trend from 1950 to 2011. For total tornadoes, 2012 is tracking ahead of the average for the last six years. In a future climate with a hotter globe, you're going to decrease the strength of the jet stream. It doesn't have to blow as hard to transport heat between the equators and the poles. And that means you've got less of a force to get air spinning for tornadoes. So less of a jet stream effect to get the air spinning, but more instability. How is it all going to play out? Well, we don't know. So it's a big unknown as far as what climate change might do to tornadoes. This is part one of two on the strange winter and spring of 2012. Part two with more great interviews is at the Yale Forum for Climate Change and Media, linked here and in the video description.